Tour of Colombia, Vuelta a Colombia, a lot of sprint stages. One man dominated them all, Juan Sebastián Milano. So here we go, stage two, two kilometres go, quick stepper on the front with the man with the magic elbows, Bob Youngles, pulls off Alaphilippe there. Uh, so we've got, you know, quick steps is split with Milano and his lead out man, who I believe is Ferrari, I am not going to check this. But anyway, his lead out team is uh, pretty decent, um, does the job. And uh, it's Hodge, who uh, quick stepper riding for, there's like a Barbier, is it? And uh, Avila of uh, Israel Cycling, whatever that name is. Startup Nation play people. Anyway, they're slightly relevant. They're not going to contest. It's basically Hodge versus Milano. So Milano is now in fourth wheel. And we've got the quick step lead outs just sort of burn themselves off the front. At the beginning, I guess they didn't know what to do, but you'll see their tactics do evolve. And at this moment in time, we've got Israel starting to go. Everyone's a bit confused what's going on. Um, it starts to slow up. It's sort of a straight thing. Here we go with... Uh, they're trying to lead out for Jakobsen now. Quick step, go on the left-hand side. Milano easily hops on the wheel. Milano just waits and waits and waits. Jakobsen's quite far back, to be fair. Um, he's not really in top condition. Um, and then you see on the right-hand side, Milano just comes through and just absolutely dominates. It's not great footage from this. We'll get the helicopter shot and you'll see. But the, the sort of gaps that he puts into, into Hodge is just unbelievable. Um, he's seriously more powerful. I thought this was Gaviria first time I watched it. But look at this. When he comes past... Jakobsen on the right hand, um, so Hodge on the right hand side, cheerio lad, you're not getting like, that's just domination, it's not even coming close, and you've got two Israel side and Gamiels crashing now, whatever, um, but yeah, he, I thought it was Gaviria first time watching, I was like, oh fair enough, Gaviria's back in form, I was like, no, Gaviria's not there, it's Milano, um, who is this lad, and then, you know, obviously the next day we've got stage three, which is just about to come up, and, uh, you know, much of the same, to be honest, uh, it really was a, absolute top top performance from the old man uh, which is what we absolutely love to see so move on to stage three now uh, a couple of attacks from some conti boys there are a fair few of these uh Ineos are on the front not really sure who they're riding for probably just gc and cheers the lad in the top right hand corner for providing the footage we love you boy uh so again similar tactics from quick step they haven't changed yet they're like it's a straight running just lob young was in the front he'll ride at 60k an hour no one's going to come past. Ideal. Uh, so, the, yeah, this Colombian national lads on the front, and then there's another Conti team uh, who are also on the front. I don't know all these names. They're a bit too complicated to learn for one race of the year, so sorry if you are racing that team, but it is what it is. Um, Milano is in the yellow jersey today, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Obviously, he's not in his normally UAE team. Uh, his UAE team Emirates kit, so he, uh, yeah, he's looking slightly different. We don't get to see what happens here, uh, but Ineos really sort of split this whole thing up uh, there's you'll see this sort of gap happens and you've got four riders off the front um, and Jakobsen and Milano are further back um, it's all a bit a bit confusing because they're basically just showing this Colombian lad who's riding absolutely out of his skin to try and get away um, I think you know this is a big race win this and a could copper contract in Europe you can start to see there's a bit of a gap coming up and you look at the speed difference here there's four riders off the front can you see I think it's in fourth wheel but we have to scroll well not scroll but just look further back um, for the Yellow jersey, who is Milano, keep your eyes on him because this is another unbelievable sprint stage. There's a bit of a gap here. Sosa decides to go pretty early, which you're about to see. And um, Milano's lead up man is in third wheel at the moment, which I first thought was Milano, but alas, it's not. So he just swings off. Sosa's like, you know what, boys? I reckon I'm a sprinter today and just launches it. And, you know, first watching, you think this this could be it. But a quick step out quickly on him. And uh, Milano's in third wheel. And Hodge is in front of him, but there's just there's just no competition when it's like you know they lead him out perfectly. Hodge goes on on the front. For me, if he had the legs, he had the legs. He even stops pedaling there on Milano, and it's a super high um high cadence sprint, very very fast, 70k an hour minimum, 75 probably, and just again, cheerio, thanks for coming. Like there's just no answering that man. Like on these super fast stages, we're gonna watch the helicopter shot here, but you're just just the, the gap he puts into him. And you can see here that you know, they're going 53-11, 65k an hour minimum at this sort of cadence. Looks like a sped up, doesn't it? Um, but when he launches, like he's got to stop pedaling for a second. And then as soon as he comes around them, it's just, yeah, cheerio again. He's, he's gone. Um, they left him, I guess, too far, too far on the front um, for Hodge. But I think ultimately, like Milano, you're just not getting around him. Like his results in Europe, okay, I'm been great. Two DNFs in Belgium, I think, on the opening weekend. But I really expect some solid solid performances from the old man um i really expect him to to do well um when he's given the opportunity especially in some sort of like two to eight season 
in Europe, sort of like Tour Britain style stages, I reckon he'll do pretty well. Right, stage five, five kilometers to go. We've gone a little bit further now, um, but decided it was useful because there's a lot of interesting tactics going on today. So obviously, as it's quick step or quick step floors or whatever they're called these days, um, decided they don't want to get mugged again. Uh, and obviously they're still on the front. And UAE literally have done no work. Like, okay, they helped bring back the breakaway a little bit, I think, but not much at the moment like the pace isn't in it and they've just really been free running and i think they decide you know what it's time to actually let them do some work because there's no point just creating a sprint every time and then just getting mugged at the line like it just doesn't make any sense so these boys go off the front for medellin and i do know them because they got oscar rodriguez is quite a big name to be fair um but the rest of them they're all attacking again so you can see that's it's quite typical with these colombian stages they bring the break back and then people still want to get in the break so just go for it um well i guess maybe in other races the pace would be higher, um, maybe for the more sprint teams. Obviously, Israel's startup nation are doing zero work as well, despite them having two people who seem to be getting top top tens. But again, you know, you've got to lean on the most dominant sprinter, in my opinion. You've got to lean on Milano. And you'll see this happens, but Milano, he's got his team and he's got a very cool head. And, you know, there's no worries for Milano. But it's a bit more of a technical run in this time, not just a motorway, um, which is always interesting to see. So, there's a couple left, a couple right-hand corners. Here are some Colombian fans going mental. We absolutely love to see um, Columbia, the Tour of Colombia, World Tour of Colombia, is one of my highlights of the year, um, mainly because the footage is very, very pirated, and I can use it. And they, you always get to see the Colombians in top condition. It's a shame Naira Man wasn't there. Definitely would have done a good, good race. Uh, but three kilometres to go, break still up the road. Um, you know, people on the road just normal Colombia, but it's pretty chaotic you see like quick step are the only people really who've got got the team together and then behind that i guess you've got two riders in front of the yellow jersey milano is still in that in that jersey um i don't really know how because there was a mount hilltop finish but i guess maybe didn't lose enough time or not 100 sure um or maybe that's potentially the points jersey which it, it could be uh but anyway he is in the yellow jersey in quick step i think around this corner must have looked and just been like you know what we're gonna let the wheel go so lantern rouge I'm sure you've heard of him. Does a lot of videos about letting the wheel go through corners, which I always think is quite a good tactic, especially if you're the dominant lead out train, don't have the dominant sprinter. If you let the lap gap go, then they the other team have to follow it, and then your sprinter might get the advantage. I think teams don't do that enough and just ride with the sprint. But sometimes just let the lead out lad go. Um, so around this corner, you see a lot of dive bombing. Um, Milano just trying to move up, but that's just, just gets bogged in again. Um, if you're further back, there was a Nuno X lad who moved like five positions up on the right hand side, which is pretty good going from the old man but again quick step on the front keeping it high but not crazily high which i think is good tactic again there's no need to burn matches unnecessarily there aren't that many people like in this thing you're going to get respect like no you know conti lads going to try and bump milano off the wheel or same with hodge like they just accept it because that's that's the way racing goes and again around this corner you can see they're starting to slow down and this is when they let the gap go so watch quick uh youngles and ala philippe they both go around them, quick step, really slow down through this corner, just block the road. Um, this cap, there's other cycling lad from Australia said teams never block, but there's a perfect example of blocking in the pro peloton. So you can buck off that little lad because he's completely wrong. Um, but anyway, so there we go. There's the gap done. And Milan has got to set his lead out lads up. And they... um. And they've just gone. Cheerio. And I mean, this is a very, very strong um, pair, isn't it? Young girls, Ala Philippe, I mean, you, you'd back this. Unfortunately, we don't get to see them closing the gap, but it's, it's a solid, solid work from Milano and his lead out train. They managed to just pull this back because this really could have been it. Um, could have been panic stations. They've only got two lads left. You know, obviously, we're an under kilometer to go, but, you know, I'm not even sure Ala Philippe knew there was a gap. I mean, he should Ala, um, Young girls should have said something on the radio or whatever. Um, but we've now got Milano on Jakobsen's wheel. So Hodges' wheel, I was getting confused. And this should be a guaranteed win um for old Jakobsen. sorry hodge hodge sorry is two wheels back he's like literally in the perfect position his lead out man's ahead of him so he can leave uh milano on the front very early to go which is what we're about to see but milano is still too strong so perfect tactics so you can see a young was still on the front then lead out man and then milano's on the quick step lead out man quick step lead out man decides to pull off pretty early on good lad top decision as we're about to see here Milano's on the front it's like oh no what, what, what do I do now like I don't really want to sprint as we can see here and then Hodge just goes and Milano's like cheerio lad 
oh, I literally stopped pedaling, lost momentum, still beats him. I think that was indicative to me that Milano is just ridiculously strong. Like, there aren't many people who can do that, where they get put on the front, wait for the other guy to start his sprint, and then catch up to him. Because he lost, like, you know, n- enough momentum, like a couple of Ks an hour for sure at this speed because of the wind resistance, and still got round them. And that's when you're like, this boy is strong. Because look here, he's like, he stopped sprinting, literally stopped pedaling at one point, still following him now. And then this is when he looks, looking around, still sort of pedals. And then he has the gap on him. Milano, okay, fine. Doesn't even get on his wheel. Doesn't even need his wheel. Just sort of half drafts him, comes straight off him. And cheerio, thanks for coming, Milano, with the hat trick. So I expect some good results from Milano. Will he be like a Marechko where he can't win Europe? Don't think so. I think he's a classy bike rider. And we'll win a fair few stages whenever we actually get some UCI cycling back. Um, so anyway, cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.